Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video, and of course, continuing on reviewing the Marvel films, and of course, you know, in the MCU. Now we've come to what, yeah, everybody considers this, you know, better than the first two, and the best Thor film, pretty much, you know? Um, you know, probably right next to, say, Love and Thunder, you know? Um, but yeah, that's right. Now we've come to Thor Ragnarok. Yes, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I can't deny that this is a great Thor film. I mean, that's not to say that the first two are bad. I don't think they were bad, bad. I mean, they were probably just, you know, not as, you know, amazing, like, gems or anything like that. They were still good, you know, but it just... You get my point. But that's when until Taika Waititi, a new fa a new face slash director, a, a new face of a director, I should say, stepped in and he wrote and directed what would turn out to be a, a great film for Thor, and if not one of the best, that being Thor Ragnarok. The story, in imprisoned on the other side of the universe, the mighty Thor finds himself in a deadly... Gladder, gladiator contest, well, kind of what it is, uh, that pits him against the Hulk. Yes, of course, the Hulk returning. His former ally and fellow Avenger, and of course, once again, played by Mark Ruffalo, Thor's quest for survival leads him in a race against time to prevent the all-powerful Gila from destroying his home world and the Asgardian civilization. So yeah, this was great, like, especially because... It's great how the movie opens, like Thor kind of gives a bit of a narration of what's been going on with him, and he comes face to face with uh Sir Surtur, if I'm saying his last name, if I'm saying his if I'm saying his name right, voiced by, hey, none other than Clancy Brown. Hey, it's great for Clancy being in a Marvel film, and you know, whether if it's on screen or if he's doing a voice, you know. Is he's he's not only a live act he's not only a live action actor, he's done a lot of voice work. I I I I, I, I you know. Um, and new faces that come in, um, Carl Urban, he's the execu executioner, you know, and, uh, bald head, like a tattoo and beard, um, and, uh, of course, you know, Anthony, the legendary, uh, Anthony Hopkins, once again playing Odin, although this time, yeah, Odin on Asgard is Loki in disguise, and as we saw at the end of, of the last Thor film, Loki had been taking over Asgard, but of course, He's been revealed. Loki takes Thor to where he left uh, their father at, at now the, you know, the demolished, like, uh, retirement home, basically. And then Doctor Strange comes in, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, and as it was teased in the first Doctor Strange film that he would be in the next Thor film, and he helps out Thor and Loki find their father. And even when Doctor Strange, like, was, like, kind of put Loki in this endless falling, you know, when he, when he, when Loki comes back, you know, I've been falling for 30 minutes. That is a hilarious line. <laughs> and had, he had been screaming for, for 30 minutes, don't you think? Yeah. Although, and also it was revealed at one point that uh, Jane, I guess, dumped Thor. I mean, even when these two teenage girls, they asked Thor for a selfie and one of them said, sorry, J sorry, hair Jane dump you, you know, and she didn't dump me, you know, as Thor says. And, of course, Odin, because he's out in this grass field and, you know, out in, you know, where the ocean is. And, actually, originally that was going to be an alleyway in New York, but they actually changed it. Um, Odin saying goodbye to his two sons. And that's when, after Odin's gone, Hela steps in. Uh, Thor's, you know, uh, sister, basically. Uh, played by Kate Blanchett. And, apparently, I have to mention this. Kate Blanchett's son wanted her to be in this movie because it would kick her career, but her career's already been kicked. Like, have, has she, you know, Lord of the Rings, for example? You name it. Um, oh, yeah, and by the way, there was this stage play earlier in the film, you know, um, and that being, like, you know, um, Matt Damon played lo actor Loki. Uh, Chris, Chris Hemsworth's brother... Luke Hemsworth played actor Thor. Well, at least his brother gets to technically be Thor. And even say Sam Neill, he was actor Odin, you know. Um, anyways, yeah, and of course we do get the, we get the return of, say, you know, of like, say, Zachary Levi and, um, you know, 
um, yeah, Idris Elba as Heimdall. Heimdall went, like, disappeared, because Loki, you know, uh, banished him or something as Odin, so. And Hera has the Executioner j ha have him join her side, and that's when, of course, Thor and Loki, they arrive in this, in this place where it's all being run by the Grand Master, played by Jeff Goldblum. Hey, Jeff Goldblum in the MCU, why not? Hey, you got two Jurassic Park actors in a Marvel film, Jeff and Sam. So yeah. And of course, we get the appearance of Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson. She was so good in this. And even when Thor realizes who she really is. And of course, yeah, as I mentioned, Hawk slash Bruce Banner once again returns. And it turns out that Bruce had been Hawk for two years, especially after the events of Avengers Age of Ultron. After he after Bruce turned into Hawk, he remained Hawk after that and, you know, up, you know, for t two years, so, you know, um, and with that jet he was on and he, he managed to, I don't think they ever establish how he made it there. I'm not sure, but Hulk had been the Grandmaster's main champion. So, but Thor, of course, helps Hulk, Bruce Banner, you know, and they get out and with the help of Loki and Valkyrie and, uh, you know, with the Grandmaster on their tail and, you know, they, they're trying to make their way into the devil's anus. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And the as the people, the, the Asgardians, they run away from Hera, from, yeah, no, Hela, sorry. And they jo they meet up and join with Heimdall, and ha Heimdall contacting Thor of what's going on. And even say when, you know, they, they do escape in a ship, and even when at one point Bruce is left to fly the ship, and he pushes one button like any weapons on the ship, and one is, It's my birthday! The, that's pretty hilarious. Well, they it manages, they, hey, that, that button seems to work as a weapon. Um, and, of course, you know, big battle going on such an Asgard, Thor versus Hela. Even when, say, very early in the film, Hela destroyed Thor's hammer. And also, Korg, voiced by Taika Waititi. Korg was so good in this, you know, my name's Korg. You know, that's that's how he talks. You know, rock, rock fellow, rock person. <laughs> so, yeah, Cork was good in this, and um, you know, of course, Korg, you know, joining him, joining Thor as well. Um, and you know, even at one point, the Executioner, he is redeemed. He redeems himself, and you know, for Asgard, a bunch of stuff that he had, and he was showing to the to two Asgardian ladies. You know, stuff that he he found on Earth, and you know, these two machine guns. You know. You know, from Texas. Is that how he says it? Like Texas? Like I, I, you know, something like that. Like he, he says Texas, but in a different way. <laughs> so he does use those machine guns, you know, and uh, attacks Hela's, um, you know, army. Even when say Hela, you know, she at one point, ro you know, awakens her army and her giant wolf. Oh gosh! Even when when Bruce reveals Valkyrie that he is Hulk, he f jumps out of the ship, and he hits th that bridge, you know, that, you know, you make your way to Asgard. He just, like, he just, he just slaps down like he, oh, God. But, of course, Hulk does, you know, a ri rise, and he takes on the wolf, etc., and uh, Hela is defeated, and thanks to when, you know, Thor, he resurrects Surtur. Again, you know, the character that Clancy Brown voices. So Surtur defeats Hela, and Surtur destroys Asgard. Asgard is gone forever. It is destroyed entirely. It's gone. And, yeah, what a way to end the film. All that's left of Asgard, the survivors, and what they would be doing next. Like, you know, well... They'd find a new home and the, the the one ship that they're in, yeah. But that is, of course, until in one of the end credit scenes. Well, uh, Thor and Loki are having a talk. They are actually, they're, I think, yeah, they're going. They are going to go to Earth. They'll find some place to live. And you know, Loki's like, "Do you think it's a good idea going back to Earth?" And you know, and as they're talking, well, at one point, like the window that they're looking at, it gets a bit dark, and they see a giant ship appears. It's Thanos. And leading up till Infinity War. And one, the last end credit scene, the Grand Master, you know, he comes face to face with who Thor came face to face with. And, you know, Valkyrie saved Thor from these cannibals. Yeah, they're basically cannibals. So the Grand Master comes face to face with them. And that's just how the movie ends. 
Oh, man. So, with all that being said, and in closing, Thor Ragnarok was... It's a great Thor film. I can't deny that. I definitely give this a 10 out of 10. And what about you guys? What do you think of Thor Ragnarok? What did you think of my review? Leave comments and give this review a like as always. Thor Ragnarok was a great film, and, you know, I can't deny it. If, if for it if for it not being, if not one of the best Thor films of all time. And that is until Thor Love and Thunder. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching. Again, 10 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Thor Ragnarok. More reviews coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward, and I'll see you guys in the next video slash review. And stay tuned later tonight for my review of another one of Artman's stop-motion films. Yeah. Pirates. <laughs> Anyways, so, until Thor Love and Thunder, take care, peace out, and Avengers, assemble.